Having covered the two main elements of a strategic business plan within the framework of the, th the theoretical framework or the UTBS, Unified Theory of Business Strategy, which we introduced yesterday, those two being formulation and implementation components, we now want to move our attention briefly to evaluation, which is the third component. Often, with business strategy, personally or as a, as, a, as, an enti as a corporate entity, we start the vision in this way. As the implementation drifts off for different reasons, we end up this way. And that's always the case, just about. Now, it, it turns out that sometimes this way is better, but most of the time is not. But more importantly, we need to understand and establish for ourselves, for our business, and in many cases personally, why is it that I wanted to go this way and I've ended up this way? That process is called evaluation. It could be self-evaluation, could be business evaluation. Many concepts we're covering here is applicable to a personal level as well as a concept of corporate level. Let's stick with the corporate level. How do we evaluate? I did mention, or we did mention in the um, section on implementation that the processes in business and commerce are closed loop server type self-correcting processes. And that's very prominent in this section evaluation where we go back and we check things in the context of the direction is the same and what happened. How do we check it? This is where the financial sector of the business plan comes into play. Remember we talked about formulation, marketing plan, implementation, operational resource plan. Financial plan comes here. Financial plan, other in form of a flow variable, profit and loss statement and cash flow statement, or a stock variable, balance sheet, is used as reporting indicators of what happened. First we do it as a forecast, then we use them as lagged indicator of evaluation. I mentioned the word lagged indicator. Let's have a look at different types of indicators we use for evaluation. There's a group of indicators, and most of you are familiar with them. They're called leading indicators, lead indicators. There's a group of indicators in any business, in uh, any context, including this type of commercial activity, which are called spot indicators. There's another category of indicators called lagged indicators. Lagged indicators apply particularly on this module here into evaluation. Why do they call them lagged indicators? Because they're of reporting nature. They will convey to us what happened. Lagged indicators we forecast, not as a leading indicator, as to what we expect to happen. We're going to be this way. Then we look at them, say, oh no, we're this way. One of the biggest problems in running businesses, and I'm sure most of you either have been like me, victim of it, or have witnessed it, where managers and directors and leaders try to run their businesses looking at the financial numbers. You know the old <laughs> saying that says, if you torture the figures, surely enough they will confess? Preoccupied with finance. Preoccupied with numbers. And there's no other way of, better way of destroying a business than that. It needs to be put in its perspective, in its rightful place. Financial numbers that are lagged indicators for reporting, for the evaluation part of the strategy. Lead indicators tell us where we're going. They're applicable to the formulation part. For instance, we want to have a look at housing prices. If you look at the house prices today in the newspapers or in the, uh, on the uh, internet, on the uh, websites that deal with house prices, you're looking at the spot indicators, what the price is today. If I would like to be able to see maybe what's happening with the prices, maybe I'll look at demand and supply of housing or certain types of housing. What are the lag indicators? What are the leading indicators that will help me with that? Well, perhaps uh, the rate of cranes being hired by the builders that shows how many buildings are coming forward. The rate of development approvals for the buildings. See, the, lag, the, the leading indicators, the spot indicators of price now. If I want to know what's happening with the yield on this housing price as well, there are leading indicators such as how many weeks free rent the landlords are offering, the tenants, to occupy the house. If that is getting more and more, it means that the occupancy is dropping. It's harder to rent these. So there's a series of leading indicators which are 
generally associated with the external environment and the formulation. Then you've got your lagged indicators, which are just described, which are embedded often in financial information for reporting. What was my profit and loss last month? What is my balance sheet looking? By the time your balance sheet shows you, as a lot of things have happened for this balance sheet to report. So the lagged indicator is very useful, because otherwise we don't know what happened. Between these leading indicators and lagged indicators in our evaluation are called things called the spot indicators, which I just touched on in terms of house prices. Spot indicators are often rate indicators. You know how we say how many units we produce per man hour worked or a person hour worked? How many uh, clients did we service per hour? See, it's a rate one. It translates a lead indicator into a lag indicator. So most of the spot indicators are operational and are rate in nature. So in evaluation of a strategy, what we're trying to do is to do the relevant indicators in the right place to see what happened compared to what we intended to happen. Then we sit down as a management and, uh, and the uh, uh, working group, and we decide other things. What things do we need to adjust? Now, where do the adjustments go? They go into the implementation program. Every three years in a strategy, we might adjust the formulation. One thing we mustn't do, at least at strategic level, keep chopping and changing the formulation because the organization gets confused. It's very expensive in terms of transaction cost of changing our formulation every six months a year. What we do, we revise it every year, and we embed it into our implementation. Where? Some of the programs that we wanted to build capacity, we might stop, might replace. Some of the processes and procedures and communication methods, we might adjust and fine tune the business to bring it back exactly like an autopilot system self-correcting service on a plane back towards where we think the business should be. And some of the most successful large businesses in the world exactly do that. They do the three-year business plans. Some of them are very good. They do scenario planning. Some of them are very good in terms of forecasting the future and different uh, methodologies, such as Monte Carlo simulation methods. A very complex way of doing that for larger organizations. And what, what they do, they do three or five years. At the end of every year, they translate the first year of the business plan into their budgets, into their operations. And then they go and evaluate it using the indicators that I said. And they fine tune their implementation mechanisms to bring it back together. After the third year, they do another formulation. This type of cycle is very important in terms of evaluation of the position and the um, efficiency and effectiveness of the strategic plan. 